Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, so my name is Mark Thurston. I'm the Managing Director of CH2M's European business based here in the London office. So what first interested you in engineering? Like you, I was good at maths and physics at school and we did some practical things as well as the sort of classroom stuff and I thought actually this is what I think I would want to do when I leave school. So is it those sort of contacts that helped you like into the firm? That you I think it helped. It was based on sort of what felt right for me, what I liked at school. Uh, I didn't want to become a craft, I didn't want to become a bricklayer or a carpenter or a plumber. I, didn't want, I sort of wanted to do something practical but I didn't see myself, but I saw myself being something more technical. Um, I, I, if I'm honest, I'm probably not quite sure why that was. And the idea of electricity really interested me. It's because I actually trained to be an electrical and electronic engineer. So that was the area that I went into, yeah. So what sort of sparked the change of your career path? Like how did you get into management? And i have done my apprenticeship. I'd spent some time sort of on the tools, being, you know, I'd learned my craft. I'd practiced my craft. I realized that I didn't want to be out and about. I saw that a career path for me was more in the office than being out. And I'd done out, been out and about for a couple of years and work shifts, got some good experience. And then when I went into the office, it sort of redefined what engineering was because it was more focusing on design. It was more focusing on how things get designed and built. And I also realized that I enjoyed more the interaction with other people. And certainly when I've been an engineer and a technician, you tend to work alone a lot or maybe just as a pair. Whereas once I found myself in an office and was working with project teams, it was more fun. And I thought that I think the people side of it, when that came into play in my second half of my 20s, started to change, I think in my own mind, perhaps where my career would go next. So what would you say is the most demanding or challenging thing about your job? The job I've got today? Yeah. I think one of the toughest things is just being disciplined about the priorities to make sure you're sort of putting your energy into the right things at the right point in time and you have to do that constantly because every single day there's a new set of challenges, new set of things that demand your time really. Do you personally get to travel to the different countries that you work with? I do, I do. In fact July will be one of the first months of the, the only month this year I won't be on an aeroplane. Uh, so I've been to our office in Poland twice this year. Uh, in fact, next week I'm going to our office in Exeter, but I'll only get the train there. I won't fly to Exeter, and we do quite a lot of work for the Environment Agency down there. So probably every month I maybe make two trips, one to maybe one of our offices where I might go to a project or go and visit a site, and then one other uh, time I would go to just do a site tour, do a safety tour, leadership tour. Um, last month I went to the Tideway project which is on the River Thames, which I think you're going to get to see this week, yeah. So, so I try and make a point of getting out twice a month, yeah. What would be the best advice you would give students like me? I think have an open mind. Uh, there's no substitute for hard work. There's no substitute for sort of applying yourself in whatever it is you get asked to do. So I think a sense of humility that there's no job that's too mundane for us. We need to sort of learn and apply ourselves in uh, everything we do. I think try and build your network, even amongst your peers, amongst the sort of more junior people in our company. And, and, and then sort of find, I always sort of say to young people, try and find more than one mentors. Latch on to two or three people that will be good role models for you, people that you can go and get some advice from. You've got your teachers and your parents, but, and maybe in your case your big sister, but I think having other people that can give you a different perspective, I think building relationships, being open to where your career might take you, being adaptable and being prepared to do some things that perhaps feel a bit risky and a little bit out of your comfort zone is always a good thing to do. So why is it so important for us to invest in STEM? I think if firms like us don't invest in young people, invest in communities that enable young people to understand the sorts of careers they can have in engineering, construction, the areas of science and technology, then quite frankly we won't get people to come into our industry. So we have a responsibility to make it attractive, we have a responsibility to make it fun and interesting. So we've got 20 SMF students with us this week and if we could get half of those to walk away at the end of the week really thinking seriously about a career in the STEM arena, I think that would be really powerful. That would be a huge success for us. And that feels not only we've done our bit for sort of what SMF is trying to do for young people, but also I think we've done our bit 
for the industry and we can do no more than that. So that would be success for us.